We've all heard many brilliant commentaries on Nasev and Nishma. We will do and we will learn. But Rabbi Goodman brings us a base Halevi that will really add the missing color and depth and at the same time explain something you've always known without really understanding. So, boys, I stay tuned. There's a Gavaldiga podcast. Rabbi Steve Geller does a Gavaldiga Zach. And that'll be coming out this week. Torah Giants on Chumash. Shalom of Ruch and welcome to the weekly piece on the Parsha from Torah Giants on Chumash, written by Rabbi Yitzchak Mayor Gunman, the Rabbi Mayor. Welcome to Torah Giants on Chumash, I'm Steve Geller. He took the document of the covenant and read it in the ears of the people, and they said, all that Hashem has spoken, Nasev and Nishma, we will do and we will hear. Let's quickly review a few things we know about Nasev and Nishma. In the Gemara and Shabbos, Rav Simai expounds, when Yisrael began with, we will do, before we will hear, 600,000 angels descended and crowned each Jew with two crowns in recognition of these two expressions. The key to this reward was in the order that they used, and we need to understand why. The difference between these two verbs is evident, clarified in the Zohar, and translate as, we will do, as performing mitzvahs, and we will hear with listening to words of Torah. In other words, doing refers to action, and hearing refers to Torah study. But here's what you came for. The Beis HaLevi offers an entirely new dimension to this topic. The Midrash Tanchuma states that in response to Nasa Nishma, Hashem indeed lovingly sent each Jew two angels, one to place a crown on his head, and one to gird him with armor or ornaments. And here is the Beis Halevi's interpretation of that Midrash. Since they responded with, we will do, rather than I will do, this implied two promises. One, each will observe the Torah themselves, and two, by saying we will learn, we commit to help influence and guide others to observe it as well. Thus, the crown was for their personal pledge of keeping the Torah, and the armor or the ornaments were to give each person the wisdom and strength to influence others. Remember this for a moment, because now so many things will fall into place. First, this gives us perfect insight into the statement in Parshas Kisisa when Hashem commands after the incident with the golden calf, and now remove your ornaments, and they strip themselves of their ornaments. Unklos in the Zohar translates this expression as referring to the armor given by the angels for Nasev and Nishma. But what's the connection? Ever since the Chet, man eating from the Eitz Hadas, effectively confusing good and bad and ingesting the Eitz Sahara into our bodies, everything that Hashem gives us, every mitzvah, bracha, gift, and reward can be used for the Kedusha for which it was given, or the Eitz Sahara can entice us to use these same gifts for evil. We see this concept in its stark reality in a Midrash. The Midrash Rabbah makes an astonishing statement. Says Rav Shmuel ben Rav Nachman, It was pleasant for our fathers to receive the Torah and say, All that God has spoken we will do and hear. Was it also pleasant for them to say about the golden calf, This is your God, Israel? What an unusual statement. But what could that comment mean? Let us consider why they did not say this is our God, Israel. The primary sin of idolatry is not the physical act itself, but the intention behind the act. As we find in the Gemara, bowing to an idol without truly accepting it as a God is not punishable. It appears that even those who participated in the golden calf incident had deep-rooted doubts about their actions. Therefore, they say, your God, to others, but excluded themselves. Thus, their basic crime was that they misused this powerful gift of influencing others to Torah and mitzvahs and learn and used it instead to motivate them to evil. We were not upholding the promise to keep others from sin for which they had received the ornaments from the angels. This is why indeed they were told to strip themselves of the ornament as understood by Unclus and the Zohar. This suggests the very powerful gift given to us by Hashem from our statement, Nasa Venishma, that we would listen and learn the Torah together. We will be able to influence each other positively. Look at the Kirov movement, Dafyomi movement, yeshiva systems all throughout Gullus. This achtas is a very powerful concept in Judaism. We are all cells of one body. But again, there has to be a Mita connected Mita to this powerful divine force. Let's look at a well-known Pusik and its famous Rashi and make sure we all know exactly what it says. We journeyed from Rafidim and came to the desert of Sinai and camped in the desert. Israel camped there opposite the mountain. Notice Fayachanu, we all encamped, is plural, but the Pusik repeats Fayichansham, we encamped there, but this time in the singular. Rashi says the singular indicates Ke'ishachad Belevachad. Rashi beautifully celebrates as one man with one heart. So meaningful, in fact, it appears in the Pesach Haggadah list of Dayenus, that even if we experienced that Achdus and not gotten the Torah, Dayenu, it would have been enough. But the Pusik mentioned in the two words right before Vayachanu Bamidbar, in the plural, 
plural. Why did they have to say that at all? Maybe this double mention explains the lesser known end to that same Rashi. The one celebrating Ke'ishachad Belevachad, Rashi also acknowledged the danger of the dark side to this powerful influence we have on each other. Avol Shar Ko Hachanios, but all their other encampments, the Saromos Uvamachalokas, were with a murmuring spirit and a spirit of dissension. Now the Midrasha comment flows smoothly. It was very nice of Israel to promise we will do and thus guarantee that they would work to keep all others in the fold of Torah observance. The Mita Kenegad Mita of that was, was it nice for them to say this is your God and openly permit others to worship the calf that they hesitated to personally accept? Just an astonishing insight from Rav Yosef Dov Soloveitchik Zatzal. And just how can you influence others positively to learn Torah? Funny you should ask. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, but most importantly, hit the share button, which copies the link to this video, allowing you to simply paste it into emails, texts, WhatsApp group, or your social media of choice. We see the power of influencing others. Let's regain our ornaments and spread this Torah of Rabbi Goodman, realizing the potential of his life's work, Torah Giants on Chumash. We go to Yeshiva to learn, that's Torah. We seek closeness to Gedolim, that's Torah. We daven for inspiration and v'sein chalkenu v'sorasecha, that's Torah. We come up with chidushim in our own learning, that's Torah. Maybe. Share your chidushim. Send your original Torah pieces to torahmaybe at gmail.com or email that address for more information. Also visit www.youtube.com slash at torahmaybe.